Hi friends, welcome to Children's Chapel. Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, and so we've added another green ribbon to our ribbon calendar. If you have a calendar at home, you can add a green Sunday to your calendar as well. All right, we are going to get started just like we always do, and we're going to light our candle. And so if you have a candle at home with your parents' help or an adult's help, you can light the candle with me. And we're gonna say, why do we light the candle? To remind us that God is with us. Next, we're going to move into our time of prayer. Prayer. And so, in order to get our bodies and our hearts and our minds ready to talk to God, we're going to use the singing bowl. We're going to put our hands in the air. I'm going to ring the bowl. We're going to listen with our ears. When we can't hear the sound anymore, we're going to put our hand down and we will pray the Lord's Prayer together. So, hands up. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Next, we are going to sing our song with Jimmy. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart, Christ be within me, Christ be Christ be above me, never to part. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be Christ be above me, never to part. Great singing, everybody. All right, now we are going to do our ritual of water. And so if you're following along at home, you'll need a small bowl, a little bit of water, and maybe something to dry your hands off. We are going to pour the water into the bowl to remind us of our baptism. And at our baptism, we are welcomed into God's family and God's community, and God loves us. We learn that God loves us. And so each week, we remember that by touching the water. So I invite you to touch the water and to say, God loves me. And everybody who's watching should do the same. And after you've done that, I invite you to look at one another and to remind each other that God loves you. It's important to remember that God loves us, and it's important to remind other people that they are loved by God. All right, next we are going to listen to our story. And so we've been hearing a lot about the miracles that Jesus performed. So here is another one. Jesus heals the lepers. This story comes from the Bible. The Bible has 66 different books inside of it. Four of the books tell us about Jesus's life. They are called the Gospels. This story can be found in Luke's Gospel. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. Just as he reaches a village, 10 lepers come up to him. Leprosy is a terrible illness 
In Jesus' time, when people had it, they had to live away from their homes so that others did not get sick too. People with leprosy are called lepers. Keeping their distance from Jesus, they say to him, Jesus, have mercy on us, be kind to us, heal us, help us to go home. Jesus tells them to go see the priests. The priests will decide if they can return to the village. As they leave, their illness begins to heal. They will be allowed to live in the village again. Seeing that they have been healed, one of them turns back to Jesus. He shouts praises to God. What do you think he might say? He kneels down. Thank you for being kind to us, Jesus. Jesus asks, didn't I heal 10 people? Where are the other nine? Only you returned to thank God. Get up and go. It is your faith that has made you well. Why do you think only one person returned? The end. All right, so one of the important things in this story is the person that turned back, turned around and went to Jesus and said thank you and praised God for this miraculous thing that has happened to them, healing them. It's amazing. And although it was only one person, I think we can learn that it, that it is important in those times of joy and wonder and when miraculous things or happy things happen, that we can turn to God and say thank you and praise God and notice God in those moments. That notice that God is working. I feel like oftentimes when we're sad or we're afraid, those are the moments when we really think about turning to God. And those are good moments to turn toward God and to pray and to ask for God's help. But in those moments when we are happy, when we're excited, when good things happen, when miraculous things happen, it is also important to thank God and to praise God and to know that God was part of that joy too. So God is with us all the time in those times of sadness and maybe being afraid, but also in those times of healing and happy things and miraculous things and things that give us joy. And so it's important to remember to turn back and thank God for the amazing things that can happen in our life. And so what things, I want you to think about that this week, what amazing things might happen that we should give thanks to God? Or what amazing things happened last week that we can give thanks to God for? And keep an eye out for those things this week. When something exciting happens, Say thank you to God, or recognize that God is a part of that. All right, that is all the time that we have for Children's Chapel this week. We are going to blow out our candle and say goodbye, but remember when we blow out the candle, that doesn't mean that God is no longer with us because God is always with us. Our reminder is just no longer with us. Bye friends, have a great week.